Chris, you said you want your team playing better basketball at home. Um, a slower start, but they finish it off. How did you assess it? That was, you know, a tough team. Um, they really make you work with all the switching and all the, kind of their all their small ball lineups and stuff like that. So um, it took us a while to find a rhythm. Um, you know, certainly we'd like to get off to better starts. That would be a priority, but um, you know, we had some units out there that really were moving the ball and playing with pace and being decisive. And that's what we have to do when we face that much switching. So, um, but all in all, you know, we did a great job of guarding the three point line until the end. Um, you know, <clears throat> could have done a little bit better job on 50 50 balls. Thought they beat us to those. Um, but it's, you know, it's a, a, a good team playing gr uh, really good basketball right now. And, um, you know, super motivated by what, what their opportunity is down the stretch. So, uh, it was never going to be an easy one. So, no, proud, proud of the guys. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Nas Reed continues to kind of star in any role that you give him off the bench starting. What did you see from him tonight? I mean, it was huge, you know, uh, scoring in the second quarter, um, you know, sparked our run, kind of turned the game around for us offensively, uh, hit the big three late. Uh, definitely, you know, played an awesome game. So. Chris, J Max with plus 17 in his 18 minutes. I mean, I know we've talked a little bit about it, but just what do you see in night in and night out from him to shift the game in such a dramatic way? Of yeah. Tonight? You know, j Mac is, uh, gets a lot of 50 50 balls, and that's huge for us. As uh, we just talked about, they, you know, they beat us the most of them tonight. Um, so uh, that's one. He creates pace, gets off it early. Um, just, you know, we just play with a different tempo when he's on the floor. His shot making, as we've talked about for a couple weeks now, is super high level. So defensively, we don't feel, you know, even if we switch, we feel like he's going to battle his way through anything that we ask him to do. Um, it's toughness. So. In the past, I think switch heavy line uh, defenses have been hard for you guys to handle at times. Does having, when you put J-Mac and Kyle and Mike out there yeah. together, I mean, is that collective IQ just what you need to sort through that? Yeah, for sure. Um, just the passing, the playmaking, uh, the willingness to move it, move off of it, um, cut. You know, share the floor. I think Akil does a good job in those lineups too because he plays quick and quick decisions, gets downhill. A lot of times he's attacking a closeout after a switch. So. Chris, you know when uh, Kyle Anderson was struggling earlier in the season, you never wavered in your your confidence in him in whatever whatever the role might be. Yeah. Um, how, how have you seen that sort of pay off here over the last, I mean tonight, but obviously over the last month or so? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I try to keep confidence in all of our players, um, but more importantly, you know, he was our most important player last year in many ways. You know, he he he, he saved our season. He did anything we asked him to do, um, so we know we had it in him. Um, you know, he's played mostly at the three this year, um, which has been an adjustment. You know, for many reasons. I mean, he's a he's a basketball player, so he can play all over the floor. But you know, I think the rhythm of the game for him was slightly different at times. Um, <coughs> that certainly had you know something to do with it. Um, but uh, you, know, he's, you know, I think since the trade deadline, you know, he breathed a sigh of relief uh, that he wasn't going anywhere, and, and, and thankfully, what he hadn't, and never never had any plans to. So, um, but it's seemingly at that point in time, is everything's just been better and better for him. So, it looks like the Kyle of old. What does J Max shooting opened up for you, just in terms of lineup possibilities? It seems like you can throw pretty much any group out there right now. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, you can know, play him alongside Kyle. Um, you, know, you can play him along. You can play him out there with Rudy. You can play him with any, anybody really. Um, the, like combination that we used to often start the fourth with has been dynamic um, in lots of different ways, and J Max shooting is you know really is really bolstered it. So. And. Can't seem to hit a jumper right now. Carl obviously out, and yet you know, the offense really didn't have many issues against one of the better defenses. Is that kind of the whole idea behind you know moving the ball, making quick decisions, and good offense will follow no matter who's out there? Yeah, I think that. I mean, to me, that's the idea of the game of basketball on the offensive end. You know, just kind of share it, move it, find the open guy. Particularly when you know you're playing switch heavy defenses, because the number one intent is for them to just bait you into slow uh, ISO basketball and load up in the paint. Um, and you know we got we didn't fall for that after the first quarter. I thought we did a good job of you know playing quicker. Um, but yeah, no doubt about it. It's, you know that's kind of the, to me the essence of the game. So. 
Does it surprise you the way uh, some of your opponents are playing you, the way they attack you? I mean, uh, seem to be going after Edwards a little bit. You mean uh, defensively? Yes. Yeah, um, a little bit. I mean, no, it doesn't, doesn't surprise me. I mean, um, you know, I think uh, um, you know, we're, we're, we don't feel like vulnerable with it. So, um, you know, today they, I thought they, they tried to attack Rudy a lot, you know. Um, we saw that the other day. I can't remember who it was. It was really coming, coming downhill on Rudy. Um, you know, our guys are ready for the challenge. Ant and, and you know, it's three games now without without a three as he's trying to work through this. Uh, is there anything you do offensively to maybe try to lighten his load a little bit? And when it comes to there's what you are asking of him on the end the floor. Um, I mean, not really. I think opposite. I mean, I was trying to, a lot of things to get him going at one point coming out of the second half, trying to feed him on some ISOs, um, you know, try to maybe find him on some misdirection. We ended up play against the switches, um, but uh, you know, this happens. It's a long season. He's gonna, he's gonna have to keep working. You know, the, I thought he took good shots for the most part. Like you know, I think maybe a little contested on some of his threes, but I like the fact that he, you know, he, he still was you know able wanting to take them. Um, but he just got to pick up. He has to pick up his decision making. You know, he's got to go back to being quicker, a little bit more in transition, a little bit quicker off the catch. Um, and keep trusting the catch and shoot. Overall, this team's ability to maybe adjust within games, like let's say from the first quarter up where you struggled offensively yeah. to the rest of the night, or different nights defensively, how important has that adaptability within games been to your success? This I think it's been huge, you know. Um, and it's a little bit of a, it's kind of a, a remnant, if you will, of like having to cover so many different types of game plans, like coming into a game, you know, just getting used to employing different guys in different ways. So when we make these switches in the middle of the game, guys are pretty comfortable because we've done a lot of these things before. Um, you know, offensively, uh, you know, they right away recognized that they needed to move and move the ball more tonight. Um, and then, you know, I thought we did a good job of taking advantage of our size when it was there, you know, at the basket. When you are going up and down and running hot and cold, how do you balance out making lineup tweaks that seem to be logical counters versus just reliability for the people who know that their rotation is there? Yeah, I mean, we've kind of fallen into a little bit of a rotation right now, um, uh, and it's been working for us, so we kind of keep running it back somewhat. Um, but, you know, I think... There was a moment tonight where I felt like maybe shuffling it up, but I didn't. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's again, I think one of the ways that as a coach we can impact the game is by the substitutions that we make. So I always, you know, I never want to fall into like a strict rotation. I want to always, and there are guys I think are know that and are uncomfortable with that. You know, a lot of players like to always know when they're playing. Um, our guys have a rough idea, but you know, I, I still like to go whichever way we want to. Chris, can you tell us about the shoes you wore tonight? Yeah, so uh, it's Autism Awareness Week here. Um, a lot of coaches around the league are in, are in support um, of the uh, autism awareness um, efforts that are being put out by uh, the league and the coaches association in particular. Um, and these shoes will be worn for several games this week and then uh, autographed and auctioned off for for the benefit of the charity, so. Thanks, Thank you, guys. Thanks,